Hey, Jenny. Oh, hi, Steve. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. How's it going? Fine, thanks. I'm so glad the exams have finished. Me, too. So, are you going on a holiday this summer? Yes. I've decided to go to Mexico for the whole summer vacation, six weeks in total. That sounds great. What are you going to do there? Well, actually, it's a working holiday. I'm going to work at a school teaching English to children. What about you? I'm going to Paris for two weeks. Are you going with your family? No, I'm going with my best friend. We've enrolled in a language school to study French. <laughs> That sounds like fun. Have a good trip. You too. Track two. Good afternoon, Royal Mount Hotel. How may I help you? Hello. Um, I'd like to book a twin room, please, for next week. One minute, please. I'll just check if we have one available. Yes, we do, sir. Now, I just need to take down a few details, if I may. Yes, of course. What name is the booking under? Uh, my name, Duncan Jeffrey. That's G E O. Double F R E Y. G E O double F R E Y. Uh huh. And could I have a contact telephone number, please?、Uh, yes, five seven six two two three eight two one. When will you be arriving, sir? Sometime on the evening of the nineteenth of September.、Uh, yes, and we'll be leaving on the twenty third. How much will that be in total? So that's a twin room. For a twin, it would normally be two hundred and thirty-five pounds, but I can give you a special rate as it's low season: two hundred and ten pounds for the six nights. Great, thank you. And how would you like to pay, sir? We accept cash, check, or credit card. I'll pay cash on arrival if that's okay. Of course, sir. We look forward to seeing you. Track three. So, what are the differences between these four hotels? Well, the main difference is in the facilities they offer. The Hotel Sunshine is the only one which has a gym, and it's also got one of the top health spas in the area. It's next to a lake, so you can do water sports there. But if you really like sailing or water skiing, then the Highland Hotel would probably be the best place because it offers great instruction programs in these sports. Actually, I'm not a sporty person. Okay. Um. Well, what about the Hotel Carminia? It's a brand new hotel and it prides itself on its cinema and multimedia centre. And then there's the Royal. This one has a conference room, a meeting room, and free computer access. But it's not really appropriate for children. There's not much in the way of entertainment. Well, I'm going on holiday, not to work, and it's just my wife and me. So I think we'll book with the Hotel Carminia, please. Track four. So there's a great walking tour tomorrow morning, or tomorrow night we could go on the cruise round the harbour. What do you think, John? Well, we've got theatre tickets for tonight, so we'll be too tired for the walking tour in the morning. But I don't fancy the cruise either. Why not? It'll be fun. Look, it's a dinner cruise, and it's only twelve dollars each. I hate the sea, and I'll be sick with fear if the waves are big. And dinner on a boat? I just couldn't. <laughs> but we'll be in the harbour. Still. Ah,、oh, what about this? There's a bus tour tomorrow evening. It's only five dollars fifty. And it goes all around the main tourist sites. Yeah, that sounds okay, but I'd much rather. Track five. Where shall we eat tonight? Well, there are plenty of options. The guide says this city has hundreds of restaurants. What kind of food would you like to have, John? Well, I quite like seafood. There's the captain's table on Firth Street. The guide gives it four stars. Hmm. I don't know. 
The hotel receptionist told me the service is slow. But if you like seafood, there are a couple more places in the guide. Ah, uh, yes. Mangan's or Joe's Cafe. What about those, Sam? Mangan's could be a good option. It's nicer than Joe's Cafe, and there are fantastic views as well. We'd probably pay a bit extra. Joe's Cafe is much cheaper. But we're on holiday. I think we should splash out. That sounds great. Oh, no. Hold on, it's closed tonight. Oh, what a shame. Shall we go to Joe's Cafe, then? Yes, I suppose we'll have to. I'll give them a call and book a table. Can I use your phone? Uh, no. Sorry. I've left my phone in the hotel. We can ask the receptionist to do it. Let's go back now and sort it out. We can get changed and have a drink before dinner, if you like. OK, good idea. Track 6 Section 1 You will hear a tourist asking for information at a tourist office. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. In the exam, there will be a pause of 20 seconds. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation related to this will be played first. Hello, how can I help you? Um, hello. Is it possible to book a bus tour of the city here? Of course, sir. When would you like to take the tour? There are tours in the morning, afternoon and evening. Sometimes it's nice to see the city at night with the buildings lit up. We'll be going out for dinner tonight, so we'd prefer to go this afternoon. Oh, and it's for two people. The tourist says that the tour is for two people, so the number of passengers has been written in the notes as two. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello, how can I help you? Um, hello. Is it possible to book a bus tour of the city here? Of course, sir. When would you like to take the tour? There are tours in the morning, afternoon and evening. Sometimes it's nice to see the city at night with the buildings lit up. We'll be going out for dinner tonight, so we'd prefer to go this afternoon. Oh, and it's for two people. Right. Now, I just need some details. Can you give me the names of the two people, please? Yes. Susan Field and James Carter. Susan Field and James... Sorry, can you spell your surname for me, please? It's Carter. C-A-R-T-E-R. -E Thank you. And can I have a contact telephone number? Why do you need one? Just in case we have to cancel the tour and need to contact you. I see. Well, my mobile number is 07988 636 197. That's 07988 636 197. Now, can you also tell me which hotel you're staying at? The Crest Hotel. Oh, uh, no, sorry. That's the hotel we're staying in next week. It's the Riverside Hotel. Oh, the Riverside is a lovely hotel. Are you enjoying your stay? Yes, we are, very much. We'd definitely recommend it to others. Oh, I am glad. Now, I can book you on the tour at 4pm. Would that suit you? Alternatively, there is one at 2. 2 would be better for us, please. Right. That's booked for you, sir. Two people at 2pm today, August the 14th. You pay the bus driver when you get on, and it's £4 per person. Thank you very much. Track 7 Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. In the exam, there will be a pause of 20 seconds. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Can I also ask you about the museum in the main square? I was reading about it in my guidebook and was shocked to see that the entrance price is £10. Why does it cost so much? Well, the museum has the largest collection of Latin American art in Europe. People come from all over the world to see it. But that's not the reason why it's so expensive to get in. You see, the building is very old and it needs repairs. The £10 ticket cost will go towards repairing the roof and the walls. I see. Well, I suppose it's worth paying £10 to see the collection. Yes, I think so too. Is there anything else I can help you with? 
Actually, there is. I was wondering if you knew of any good restaurants in the area. Well, there are a few restaurants near the harbour and a couple on the beach, which are nice. The problem is that the smell of the fish market is quite strong down there.、Hmm. I don't think my girlfriend would be very pleased. I know what you mean. It's not very romantic, is it? <laughs> my advice would be to go to the next town. It's bigger and the restaurant selection is wider. You can get there by taxi and it only takes about ten minutes. The town is quite picturesque. Is it for a special occasion? Yes, it's my girlfriend's birthday, so I'd like to go somewhere special. Uh, do you know any of these restaurants well enough to tell me about them? Well, I know about a few of them, and there are pictures in this leaflet here. Oh, this one here is lovely the Belle View, and it's extremely popular. It has a famous chef, so it's not cheap, but the standard of the food is very high. It's right by the sea, and there are wonderful views if you get a good table. Then there's the Lighthouse Cafe. You can see the picture here, which isn't really a cafe at all. In fact, it's a great restaurant, and a lot of TV celebrities and actors eat there. The place has been going for over a hundred years. It's quite an institution around here.、Mm, I'm not sure about those two. They sound too expensive to me. I was thinking of somewhere small, not too upmarket, but with good food. In that case, what about Harvey's? The same family has run this restaurant for over a century, and it's reasonably priced and really popular with local people. Oh, and there's another family-run restaurant, Stonecroft House. New owners took over a month ago, and they're getting good reviews. There's a new chef there, and the food is meant to be very good. This leaflet has the contact details for all the restaurants, so you can just call them if you'd like to book a table. Great, thanks. You've been very helpful. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Hey, Jenny. Oh, hi, Steve. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. How's it going? Fine, thanks. I'm so glad the exams have finished. Me too. So, are you going on a holiday this summer? Yes, I've decided to go to Mexico for the whole summer vacation, six weeks in total. That sounds great. What are you going to do there? Well, actually, it's a working holiday. I'm going to work at a school teaching English to children. What about you? I'm going to Paris for two weeks. Are you going with your family? No, I'm going with my best friend. We've enrolled in a language school to study French. That sounds like fun. Have a good trip. You too. Track two. Good afternoon, Royal Mount Hotel. How may I help you? Hello.、Um, I'd like to book a twin room, please, for next week. One minute, please. I'll just check if we have one available. Yes, we do, sir. Now I just need to take down a few details, if I may. Yes, of course. What name is the booking under?、Uh, my name, Duncan Jeffrey. That's G E O. Double F R E Y. G E O double F R E Y. Uh huh. And could I have a contact telephone number, please?、Uh, yes, five seven six two two three eight two one. When will you be arriving, sir? Sometime on the evening of the nineteenth of September. Yes, and we'll be leaving on the twenty third. How much will that be in total? So that's a twin room. For a twin, it would normally be two hundred and thirty-five pounds, but I can give you a special rate as it's low season: two hundred and ten pounds for the six nights. Great, thank you. And how would you like to pay, sir? We accept cash, check, or credit card. I'll pay cash on arrival if that's okay. Of course, sir. We look forward to seeing you.
Track 3. So, what are the differences between these four hotels? Well, the main difference is in the facilities they offer. The Hotel Sunshine is the only one which has a gym, and it's also got one of the top health spas in the area. It's next to a lake, so you can do water sports there. But if you really like sailing or water skiing, then the Highland Hotel would probably be the best place because it offers great instruction programmes in these sports. Actually, I'm not a sporty person. OK. Um, well, what about the Hotel Carminia? It's a brand new hotel and it prides itself on its cinema and multimedia centre. And then there's the Royal. This one has a conference room, a meeting room and free computer access. But it's not really appropriate for children. There's not much in the way of entertainment. Well, I'm going on holiday, not to work, and it's just my wife and me. So I think we'll book with the Hotel Carminia, please. Track 4 So, there's a great walking tour tomorrow morning. Or tomorrow night we could go on the cruise round the harbour. What do you think, John? Well, we've got theatre tickets for tonight, so we'll be too tired for the walking tour in the morning. But I don't fancy the cruise either. Why not? It'll be fun. Look, it's a dinner cruise and it's only $12 each. I hate the sea and I'll be sick with fear if the waves are big. And dinner... On a boat? I just couldn't. But we'll be in the harbour. Still. Ah, what about this? There's a bus tour tomorrow evening. It's only $5.50 and it goes all around the main tourist sites. Yeah, that sounds OK, but I'd much rather... Track 5 Where shall we eat tonight? Well, there are plenty of options. The guide says this city has hundreds of restaurants. What kind of food would you like to have, John? Well, I quite like seafood. There's the captain's table on Firth Street. The guide gives it four stars. Hmm, I don't know. The hotel receptionist told me the service is slow. But if you like seafood, there are a couple more places in the guide. Ah, uh, yes. Mangan's or Joe's Cafe. What about those, Sam? Mangan's could be a good option. It's nicer than Joe's Cafe... And there are fantastic views as well. We'd probably pay a bit extra. Joe's Cafe is much cheaper. But we're on holiday. I think we should splash out. That sounds great. Oh, no. Hold on, it's closed tonight. Oh, what a shame. Shall we go to Joe's Cafe, then? Yes, I suppose we'll have to. I'll give them a call and book a table. Can I use your phone? Uh, no. Sorry. I've left my phone in the hotel. We can ask the receptionist to do it. Let's go back now and sort it out. We can get changed and have a drink before dinner if you like. OK, good idea. Track 6 Section 1 You will hear a tourist asking for information at a tourist office. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. In the exam, there will be a pause of 20 seconds. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation related to this will be played first. Hello, how can I help you? Um, hello. Is it possible to book a bus tour of the city here? Of course, sir. When would you like to take the tour? There are tours in the morning, afternoon and evening. Sometimes it's nice to see the city at night with the buildings lit up. We'll be going out for dinner tonight, so we'd prefer to go this afternoon. Oh, and it's for two people. The tourist says that the tour is for two people, so the number of passengers has been written in the notes as two. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello, how can I help you? Um, hello. Is it possible to book a bus tour of the city here? Of course, sir. When would you like to take the tour? There are tours in the morning, afternoon and evening. Sometimes it's nice to see the city at night with the buildings lit up. We'll be going out for dinner tonight, so we'd prefer to go this afternoon. Oh, and it's for two people. Right. Now, I just need some details. 
Can you give me the names of the two people, please? Yes, Susan Field and James Carter. Susan Field and James... Sorry, can you spell your surname for me, please? It's Carter. C-A-R-T-E-R. Thank you. And can I have a contact telephone number? Why do you need one? Just in case we have to cancel the tour and need to contact you. I see. Well, my mobile number is 07988 636 197. That's 07988 636 197. Now, can you also tell me which hotel you're staying at? The Crest Hotel. Oh, uh, no, sorry. That's the hotel we're staying in next week. It's the Riverside Hotel. Oh, the Riverside is a lovely hotel. Are you enjoying your stay? Yes, we are, very much. We'd definitely recommend it to others. Oh, I am glad. Now, I can book you on the tour at 4pm. Would that suit you? Alternatively, there is one at 2. 2 would be better for us, please. Right. That's booked for you, sir. Two people at 2pm today, August the 14th. You pay the bus driver when you get on, and it's £4 per person. Thank you very much. Track 7. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. In the exam, there will be a pause of 20 seconds. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Can I also ask you about the museum in the main square? I was reading about it in my guidebook and was shocked to see that the entrance price is £10. Why does it cost so much? Well, the museum has the largest collection of Latin American art in Europe. People come from all over the world to see it. But that's not the reason why it's so expensive to get in. You see, the building is very old and it needs repairs. The £10 ticket cost will go towards repairing the roof and the walls. I see. Well, I suppose it's worth paying £10 to see the collection. Yes, I think so too. Is there anything else I can help you with? Actually, there is. I was wondering if you knew of any good restaurants in the area. Well, there are a few restaurants near the harbour and a couple on the beach, which are nice. The problem is that the smell of the fish market is quite strong down there. Hmm, I don't think my girlfriend would be very pleased. I know what you mean. It's not very romantic, is it? <laughs> my advice would be to go to the next town. It's bigger and the restaurant selection is wider. You can get there by taxi and it only takes about ten minutes. The town is quite picturesque. Is it for a special occasion? Yes, it's my girlfriend's birthday, so I'd like to go somewhere special. Uh, do you know any of these restaurants well enough to tell me about them? Well, I know about a few of them, and there are pictures in this leaflet here. Oh, this one here is lovely, the Bellevue, and it's extremely popular. It has a famous chef, so it's not cheap, but the standard of the food is very high. It's right by the sea, and there are wonderful views if you get a good table. Then there's the Lighthouse Cafe. You can see the picture here, which isn't really a cafe at all. In fact, it's a great restaurant and a lot of TV celebrities and actors eat there. The place has been going for over a hundred years. It's quite an institution around here. Mm, I'm not sure about those two. They sound too expensive to me. I was thinking of somewhere small, not too upmarket, but with good food. In that case, what about Harvey's? The same family has run this restaurant for over a century and it's reasonably priced and really popular with local people. Oh, and there's another family-run restaurant, Stonecroft House. New owners took over a month ago and they're getting good reviews. There's a new chef there and the food is meant to be very good. This leaflet has the contact details for all the restaurants so you can just call them if you'd like to book a table. Great, thanks. You've been very helpful. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Track eight. Hello everyone. Sorry to interrupt your class. I just want to make a quick announcement about our summer timetable. Shimmer's Dance School will be offering new classes this spring due to strong demand. Angela Stevenson will be back this term running the ballet class. 
This class will be on Tuesdays, and instead of the normal hour from 6.30 to 7.30, we'll be running the class for an hour and a half, so it'll continue until 8 o'clock. This means we have to charge higher fees, but only slightly higher, from £8.50 to £10.50. That's only £2 for the extra half hour. Next, Janine Davis will still be teaching the tango classes. Instead of being on Mondays, these classes will be on Wednesday nights from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. The fee will still be £7.50 for the hour. Last but not least, Andrew is taking over the tap class. This class is for early risers as it starts at 8.30 on Saturday morning and finishes at 10. We expect this class to be very popular as tap is a great way to get fit while learning new dancing skills. This will cost £11. All the other classes remain the same as the winter timetable. We hope there's something for all of you at Shimmers. Track 9 Internet safety is a big concern nowadays, and to protect your children and teenagers online, it's a good idea to monitor the sites they visit. Don't be put off from letting your kids use the internet. It's essential for their education and can help them make friends too. Now, let me tell you a bit about some sites we found for children. Of course, there's a limited number of sites for the very young, but we would suggest one called Playtime Online. It's designed for children from four to six years old. It's really colourful and helps children learn skills for games. Children love it and it helps them when they begin school. Then from, say, five until about ten years of age, there's a really useful website called Moving Up. This takes playtime online a step further and enhances the maths and language skills of the child. Teachers speak highly of this site for child development. When children get into their teens, the internet can be a more dangerous place. NetAware, for the 12 to 16 year age group, makes young people more aware of online dangers. It's a good site for your child to look at before they start surfing on their own. Now, all teenagers love chatting, and Chat Electric is a site designed specifically for teens from 13 to 16 to make friends online with people their own age. The last site is invaluable for teens studying for exams. 16 to 18 year olds love Test Doctors, which is a site designed to help students revise for their exams and is full of handy hints and tips. The site is run by subject specialists, so it's packed full of information. Track 10 the Health and Education Summer Camp in the County of Cork in Southern Ireland is ideal for young people who would like to learn new sports and activities. It has a beautiful location near a river and occupies five acres. The camp has two types of accommodation, tents and cabins, both of which are modern and comfortable. The cabins are by the river and the tents are on higher ground, away from the river and next to the washrooms. There are two washroom blocks, fully equipped with showers as well as toilets. We also have facilities for cooking here. We provide all the pots, pans and utensils. All cooking is done in the cooking area, which is situated in the centre of the camp. This gives the camp a real social focal point. Track 11. The Duke of Edinburgh's Award is a programme of activities designed to help young people from all backgrounds develop personally. There are three levels, bronze, silver and gold, and for each level participants have to complete a series of activities in four categories, volunteering, physical, skills and expedition. This talk will explain what you have to do in order to get a bronze award. The first thing you need to do is find a Duke of Edinburgh Centre near you. 
This could be your school, college, or youth club. Then you'll need to pay a small fee to enroll in the program. Once you've enrolled, you'll get a welcome pack, which explains the four categories in more detail. Then you can start planning what to do. You can do many different types of activity for each category, but you must get them approved by your Duke of Edinburgh coordinator before you start, so you don't waste time doing something which is not approved. The other important person is your assessor. This is the person who will certify that you've completed each activity by signing your record book. After you've completed all the activities in the time given, your assessor will send your record book results to the operating authority, who will check it. If everything is satisfactory, you'll get your certificate and badge to confirm you've completed the award. And after that, you can start working on the silver award. Track 12 Section 2 you will hear a talk about facilities for teenagers at a leisure centre. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. In the exam, there will be a pause of 20 seconds. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to find out more about the new teen programme here at the Park Hill Leisure Centre. I'd like to take you through the programme, the classes available, describe the building itself and then give you some information about how to register and sign up for the sports and activities we offer. Afterwards, you'll have an opportunity to take a tour of the centre. We also have some taster sessions with our instructors which we hope you'll enjoy and which will motivate you to sign up. Let's go through the classes first. As you can see from the teen programme handout in your pack, we have lots of classes on offer. Our instructors are highly qualified and have lots of experience training young people. Diana is our dance instructor and she gives classes in jazz and salsa on Wednesday and Thursday evenings respectively. Jim usually takes the football practice sessions, but this year he is branching out into American sports and will be running the baseball club on Saturday afternoons. We think this will be very popular. So, Steve will now run the football practice. This class has been changed from Saturday to Sunday afternoons. Steve will also take the skateboarding class on Monday evening. The roller skating course is for beginners and this will be taken by Stella, who was last year's under-21 London roller skating champion. So you'll be in good hands with her expert advice. The day of this course is still to be arranged, but it's likely to be Tuesday. We'll confirm the day by the end of this week. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. In the exam, there will be a pause of 20 seconds. Track 13. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Now, some of you won't have been to Park Hill Leisure Centre before, so let me just tell you a little about the layout. As you can see, the reception area here is very spacious, and there is plenty of room to meet your friends and have a drink. We also have brand new dance studios with floor-to-ceiling mirrors and the latest audio equipment. The dance studios are to the left of the reception area behind the swimming pool. Oh, no, sorry, I meant opposite the swimming pool. Both the roller skating and skateboarding classes will be held in the skate arena. This has also been refurbished and we have a new 5 metre ramp in there which is proving to be popular. The arena is behind the changing rooms, which you can see behind us, between the gym and tennis courts. The tennis courts are on the right of the arena. You'll see both of these new spaces on the tour later. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is how to join the Park Hill Leisure Centre and enrol for the classes. First, you need to complete an enrolment form with some of your personal details, including your address and telephone number and the name of your school. 
If you're under 16 years old, then you'll also be required to get your parents' permission to take part in the classes. Please ask one of your parents to sign the authorisation form attached to the enrolment form. You'll find the form in your information pack. When you've done this, you just hand the forms to reception. You can pay an annual subscription of £20 or, alternatively, you can pay each time you use the facilities. There is a £1.60 admission fee in this case. Whether you decide to pay in one go or with each visit, you still need to complete the forms in your pack and become a member. Once we have the forms, we'll send your membership card to your home address. All you need to do is show this card every time you come to the centre and if you want to book a class, you just need your membership number on your card. That is the end of section 2. In the exam, you will have half a minute to check your answers. Track 8. Hello everyone. Sorry to interrupt your class. I just want to make a quick announcement about our summer timetable. Shimmer's Dance School will be offering new classes this spring due to strong demand. Angela Stevenson will be back this term running the ballet class. This class will be on Tuesdays and instead of the normal hour from 6.30 to 7.30, we'll be running the class for an hour and a half, so it'll continue until 8 o'clock. This means we have to charge higher fees, but only slightly higher, from £8.50 to £10.50. That's only £2 for the extra half hour. Next, Janine Davis will still be teaching the tango classes. Instead of being on Mondays, these classes will be on Wednesday nights from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. The fee will still be £7.50 for the hour. Last but not least, Andrew is taking over the tap class. This class is for early risers as it starts at 8.30 on Saturday morning and finishes at 10.00. We expect this class to be very popular, as tap is a great way to get fit while learning new dancing skills. This will cost £11. All the other classes remain the same as the winter timetable. We hope there's something for all of you at Shimmers. Track 9 Internet safety is a big concern nowadays. And to protect your children and teenagers online, it's a good idea to monitor the sites they visit. Don't be put off from letting your kids use the internet. It's essential for their education and can help them make friends too. Now, let me tell you a bit about some sites we've found for children. Of course, there's a limited number of sites for the very young, but we would suggest one called Playtime Online. It's designed for children from four to six years old. It's really colourful and helps children learn skills for games. Children love it and it helps them when they begin school. Then from, say, five until about ten years of age, there's a really useful website called Moving Up. 
This takes playtime online a step further and enhances the maths and language skills of the child. Teachers speak highly of this site for child development. When children get into their teens, the internet can be a more dangerous place. Net aware, for the 12 to 16 year age group, makes young people more aware of online dangers. It's a good site for your child to look at before they start surfing on their own. Now, all teenagers love chatting, and Chat Electric is a site designed specifically for teens from 13 to 16 to make friends online with people their own age. The last site is invaluable for teens studying for exams. 16 to 18 year olds love Test Doctors, which is a site designed to help students revise for their exams and is full of handy hints and tips. The site is run by subject specialists, so it's packed full of information. Track 10 The Health and Education Summer Camp in the county of Cork in Southern Ireland is ideal for young people who would like to learn new sports and activities. It has a beautiful location near a river and occupies five acres. The camp has two types of accommodation, tents and cabins, both of which are modern and comfortable. The cabins are by the river and the tents are on higher ground, away from the river and next to the washrooms. There are two washroom blocks, fully equipped with showers as well as toilets. We also have facilities for cooking here. We provide all the pots, pans and utensils. All cooking is done in the cooking area, which is situated in the centre of the camp. This gives the camp a real social focal point. Track 11 The Duke of Edinburgh's award is a programme of activities designed to help young people from all backgrounds develop personally. There are three levels, bronze, silver and gold, and for each level participants have to complete a series of activities in four categories, volunteering, physical, skills and expedition. This talk will explain what you have to do in order to get a bronze award. The first thing you need to do is find a Duke of Edinburgh Centre near you. This could be your school, college or youth club. Then you'll need to pay a small fee to enrol in the programme. Once you've enrolled, you'll get a welcome pack, which explains the four categories in more detail. Then you can start planning what to do. You can do many different types of activity for each category, but you must get them approved by your Duke of Edinburgh coordinator before you start, so you don't waste time doing something which is not approved. The other important person is your assessor. This is the person who will certify that you've completed each activity by signing your record book. After you've completed all the activities in the time given, your assessor will send your record book results to the operating authority, who will check it. If everything is satisfactory, you'll get your certificate and badge to confirm you've completed the award. And after that, you can start working on the silver award. Track 12 Section 2 you will hear a talk about facilities for teenagers at a leisure centre. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. In the exam, there will be a pause of 20 seconds. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to find out more about the new teen programme here at the Park Hill Leisure Centre. I'd like to take you through the programme, the classes available, describe the building itself and then give you some information about how to register and sign up for the sports and activities we offer. Afterwards, you'll have an opportunity to take a tour of the centre. We also have some taster sessions with our instructors which we hope you'll enjoy and which will motivate you to sign up. 
Let's go through the classes first. As you can see from the teen programme handout in your pack, we have lots of classes on offer. Our instructors are highly qualified and have lots of experience training young people. Diana is our dance instructor and she gives classes in jazz and salsa on Wednesday and Thursday evenings respectively. Jim usually takes the football practice sessions, but this year he is branching out into American sports and will be running the baseball club on Saturday afternoons. We think this will be very popular. So, Steve will now run the football practice. This class has been changed from Saturday to Sunday afternoons. Steve will also take the skateboarding class on Monday evening. The roller skating course is for beginners and this will be taken by Stella, who was last year's under-21 London roller skating champion. So you'll be in good hands with her expert advice. The day of this course is still to be arranged, but it's likely to be Tuesday. We'll confirm the day by the end of this week. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. In the exam, there will be a pause of 20 seconds. Track 13. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Now, some of you won't have been to Park Hill Leisure Centre before, so let me just tell you a little about the layout. As you can see, the reception area here is very spacious and there is plenty of room to meet your friends and have a drink. We also have brand new dance studios with floor-to-ceiling mirrors and the latest audio equipment. The dance studios are to the left of the reception area behind the swimming pool. Oh, no, sorry, I meant opposite the swimming pool. Both the roller skating and skateboarding classes will be held in the skate arena. This has also been refurbished and we have a new 5 metre ramp in there which is proving to be popular. The arena is behind the changing rooms which you can see behind us between the gym and tennis courts. The tennis courts are on the right of the arena. You'll see both of these new spaces on the tour later. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is how to join the Park Hill Leisure Centre and enrol for the classes. First, you need to complete an enrolment form with some of your personal details, including your address and telephone number and the name of your school. If you're under 16 years old, then you'll also be required to get your parents' permission to take part in the classes. Please ask one of your parents to sign the authorisation form attached to the enrolment form. You'll find the form in your information pack. When you've done this, you just hand the forms to reception. You can pay an annual subscription of £20 or, alternatively, you can pay each time you use the facilities. There is a £1.60 admission fee in this case. Whether you decide to pay in one go or with each visit, you still need to complete the forms in your pack and become a member. Once we have the forms, we'll send your membership card to your home address. All you need to do is show this card every time you come to the centre and if you want to book a class, you just need your membership number on your card. That is the end of Section 2. In the exam, you will have half a minute to check your answers. Hi, Ellen. What's the matter with you? I think I've got a terrible cold. My nose is stuffed up and I've got a sore throat. Oh, that's too bad. You should be at home in bed. It's really important to get a good rest. Yeah, you're right. And have you taken anything for it? No, I haven't. Well, you should take some vitamin C, and it's also a good idea to drink lots of liquids. That's a good suggestion. I've a bottle of vitamin C at home. Have you seen a doctor? Not yet. Well, you'd better see a doctor first, and then go back home to rest. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Ellen... It's also helpful to cook chicken soup with some garlic in it. 
and drink a cup every half an hour. It really works. Oh, chicken stock for a cold? Okay, I'll try it. Thanks. I hope you recover soon. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I want to buy a camera. What kind do you recommend? Well, it all depends. We have many kinds of cameras here. How much money do you want to spend? I want something cheap and easy to handle. Are you an experienced photographer? No, I've had no experience at all. Here's a camera that would suit you very well. It's got a very good lens and it's all automatic. So it's very easy to use. Just press one button and it's done. How much does it cost? It's only 45 pounds. Can I try? Of course. Here you are. Well, I think the price is reasonable and I like that. It is automatic, but I don't like the color. Do you have any other color?、Mm, yes. How about this yellow one? It looks better. Is it the same price? Yes. All right. I will take this yellow one. Here is 50 pounds. Here is your change. Exercise 3. In the restaurant. Good evening. Would you like to order now? Just a moment. Can we see what you've got on the menu first? There is quite a good choice on the menu, isn't there, dear? Yes. Do you want to order first? All right. I think I'll start with some apple juice. But I can't decide whether to have salmon or roast beef. Um, I remember I had fish last time we were here. So I'll try the roast beef. And yes, and some carrots. What about the sweet? Well, we can order that later. But I think I'll have some fruit salad. Shall I order some wine to go with the meal? Yes, that would be nice. So, what are you going to have? I'll start with chicken soup. And I love fish, so I think I'll have salmon and some peas. What are you going to choose for dessert? I think I'll have chocolate cake. Exercise 4 At the reception desk in a hotel. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Arthur Collins. I believe you have a room reserved for me. Just a moment, Mr. Collins. Let me see. Collins. Yes. Mr. Collins, you booked a single room three days ago. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Mr. Collins, your room number is 405 on the fourth floor. Would you fill in this form, please? Certainly. How long do you intend to stay in the hotel, Mr. Collins? Let me see. Today is Monday and. Probably I'm going to leave on Friday morning. On Friday morning, I see. Oh,、uh, excuse me, where shall I put my passport number? Just at the bottom. That's right. Thank you. Oh, would you please wake me up at 7 10 in the morning, please? 10 past 7, certainly. Porter, please take Mr. Collins' suitcase to his room. Mr. Collins, please follow him. Thank you. You're welcome. Exercise 5 Christmas Activities The Christmas season begins very early in Britain. By the end of October, you may see Christmas decorations in the streets and Christmas cards and gifts in the shops. Traditionally, people start to decorate their houses a week or two before the 25th of December, which is Christmas Day. There are a lot of traditions connected with Christmas. The most important one is the giving of presents. Family members wrap up their gifts and leave them at the bottom of the Christmas tree to be found on Christmas morning. 
Children leave a long sock or stocking at the end of their bed on Christmas Eve, the 24th of December, hoping that Father Christmas will come down the chimney during the night and bring them small presents, fruit, and nuts. They are not usually disappointed. Sometimes on Christmas Day, the family will sit down to a big turkey dinner and Christmas pudding. Later, in the afternoon, they may watch the Queen on television as she delivers her traditional Christmas message to the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. If they have room for even more food, they may enjoy a piece of Christmas cake or eat a hot mince pie. The 26th of December is also a public holiday, Boxing Day, and this is the time to visit friends and relatives or watch football. Exercise 6 Trip to Stonehenge Hi, Sue. How was your weekend? Oh, really good. I went to Stonehenge with my host family. Stonehenge? Yes, that's right. Have you ever been there? Yes, I went there last month. I really enjoyed it. Me too. Stonehenge is the best known and probably the most remarkable of prehistoric remains in the UK. Yes, it has stood on Salisbury Plain for about 4,000 years. You know, there have been many different theories about its original use. Yes, I know. My host father told me that one of the theories is that it was a place from where stars and planets could be observed. Yes, but no one is really certain why it was built. One of the things people have discovered is the positions of some of the stones relate to the movements of the sun and moon so that the stones could be used as a calendar. That's interesting. Did you go to Oxford, too? It's not far from Stonehenge. No, we didn't because of the time. My host family had to be back before three in the afternoon. Oh, what a pity. You should go sometime. It's very interesting, too. Yes, I hope I can sometime. Exercise 7. Marriage. Hello, Steve. Have you read this article? Not yet. What is in it? There are some facts about families in the United States. It says that 50% of marriages end in divorce in the United States. That's quite high, isn't it? Do many people get divorced in Korea? No, most Korean couples stay together. Families are sure different in America. Well, there are more divorces, but what else is different? Well, I think people get married younger. How much younger? Oh, I think some people get married before the age of 20. Really? What else? A lot of women work after they get married. And I think most women who have babies go back to work fairly soon, too. Yes, according to the survey, 50% of American working women return to work within a year of having a baby. Do women in Korea usually work after they get married? No. A lot of women stay at home and take care of their families, but a few work. I see. Here are some more figures. It says 67% of women with children work and 57% of children under 6 have two parents who work or a single parent who works. Exercise 8. University Campus Conversation 1. Susan is a new student. She goes to the university to register. Excuse me, can you help me? I'm looking for the registration office. Maybe I can. I think it's in the administration building. Are you a new student? Yes, I am. 
Well, look, here is the map of the campus. We're at the entrance now. The building we face is the Students' Union. The building on our left is the Administration Building. Thank you. With pleasure. Conversation 2. Susan comes out of the Administration Building and wants to buy some course books. Excuse me, I'm a new student here. I'm looking for the bookstore. Do you know where it is? The bookstore? Let me see. We are at the administration building. Do you see the gymnasium there? The one facing us on the left? Yes. Is it the tall, white building over there? Right. The bookstore is behind the gymnasium, between the cinema and the bank. I see. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Conversation 3. Susan comes out of the bookstore and she plans to go to the tennis club. Excuse me, could you tell me where the tennis club is? Tennis club? Uh, I think it is in the sports center. When you go to the sports center, you will find a swimming pool. The tennis club is opposite it and next to the playground. You can't miss it. Thanks a lot. Conversation 4 Excuse me, I'm looking for the computer center. Could you tell me where it is? The computer center. Yes, it's next to the library, opposite the recreation center. Next to the library, opposite the recreation center. Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. Conversation 5 Excuse me, could you tell me where the cafeteria is? Oh, cafeteria? I think there is one in the recreation center. Recreation center? Yes. When you come to the recreation center, you will see three buildings there. The middle one has a cafeteria. You can see a big signpost there. You can't miss it. Thank you very much. Exercise 9. Music in New Orleans. Hi, Mike. Do you like jazz? Yes, very much. And I like to dance to jazz, too. Do you know who first started to play jazz? Yes, of course. The African Americans. Do you know when and where? Uh, yes. Around 1900, people from many countries lived in New Orleans. Music was an important part of life in this city. Musicians in New Orleans started to play a new kind of music. It was called jazz. Jazz was a kind of music intended to make people happy. I know jazz is kind of a mixture of many different kinds of music. For example, African, blues, European, church music, and work songs. Most early jazz musicians were African American. They played in small bands and they didn't write down their music. Yes, they learned to work together to produce a loose and relaxed beat that is so powerful that listeners cannot help but dance, or at least move their feet along with it. And soon, white musicians were playing jazz too. I know black and white musicians seldom played together in the United States at that time. You're right. Around 1920, jazz music began to spread. Jazz musicians moved from city to city. People listened to jazz records. They heard jazz on the radio. In the 1930s and 1940s, jazz was popular in the U.S. and Canada. The music was called swing. It was played by big bands. It was said there are still a few bands made up of very old musicians playing the old-style jazz in a club in New Orleans. They play jazz for four and a half hours each evening, so many tourists go there and listen. Can the audience make some special requests for the songs? Yes. If the musicians are willing to play them, people pay a little money for the request. 
Traditional songs cost one dollar, and all others cost two. That's interesting. I'd like to visit the city sometime in the future. Exercise ten. Talking to a landlady. Good afternoon. I'm Sam. I phoned yesterday about the room. Is it still available? Yes. Come in, please. The room is very nice and big. Do you mind if I put some posters on the walls? No, I don't mind. But don't use cello tape to stick them up. It brings off the paint when you remove it. What about smoking? Is it all right if my friends and I smoke? No, I'm afraid I don't allow smoking anywhere in the house. I see. Can I use the kitchen if I want to cook something? Yes, but only before seven o'clock in the evenings, not after seven o'clock. I'm very fond of animals, and I'm thinking of getting a dog. Under no circumstances do I want any pets here. I don't like animals. Well, you said I could use your television in the evenings. Is that right? Yes, on condition that you don't have it on after midnight. We don't want to disturb the neighbors. Can I have my friend around in the evenings? Yes, that's okay, but we don't want any big noisy parties, though. So only two or three friends at the same time, please. Can I have a bath at any time? Yes, except between six and seven in the evening. I get home from work then, and I always like to have a shower before I have my evening meal. Exercise eleven, the news. This is the six o'clock news for Thursday, and first the headlines are: A powerful earthquake rocked the U.S. Northwest on Wednesday. Frightened people ran into the streets of Seattle. Earthquake officials said British Columbia felt the shock but escaped any serious damage. Transport workers are on strike in Vancouver over a pay claim, and the strike looks set to spread to all of BC. In Moscow, Russian officials gave the green light on Wednesday to California millionaire Denis Tito to become the first tourist in space. Now here's the news in detail. A strong earthquake hit Seattle at 10:54 a.m. On Wednesday, according to the National Earthquake Information Center in Golden, the magnitude 6.8 quake was centered 125 kilometers southeast of Victoria, and 56 kilometers southwest of Seattle. About 250 people were reported injured in Seattle and Olympia. At least three of them are in serious condition. In Victoria. The earthquake caused buildings to sway and shook pictures off walls, but damage was minimal," said Kay Smith, who was on the eighth floor of a downtown Victoria office building. "I thought the building was going to sway and topple over. Yet others didn't feel a thing." A spokesman said that at least two local people had hospital treatment for minor injuries. Russian officials gave the green light to California millionaire Denis Tito to become the first tourist in space, despite reservations from NASA. Tito, 60, the founder of an investment firm, took his final exam. The Interdepartmental Committee, which routinely approves cosmonauts for space flight, Included Tito in the primary crew set to launch on April 28th on a mission to the International Space Station. Tito will reportedly pay 20 million U.S. dollars for the flight. He will spend about a week on the station, despite objections from NASA, who felt that an amateur on board could jeopardize safety if there were an emergency.
Exercise 12. Some interesting places to go. Here are some interesting places to visit. First, the West End. The West End is the name given to the area of central London. It includes Trafalgar Square, the main shopping areas of Oxford Street and Regent Street. Most of London's big department stores are in these streets, and the entertainment centres are in Soho, Piccadilly Circus, and Leicester Square. Trafalgar Square was built early in the last century to commemorate the Battle of Trafalgar. Admiral Lord Nelson's statue stands on top of a column in the middle of Trafalgar Square. At Christmas time, carol singers gather round a huge Christmas tree which is sent to Britain from Norway every year. Behind Nelson's column is the National Gallery. Piccadilly Circus is the centre of nightlife in the West End. It is usually at the top of everyone's list of things to see in London because it is so well known. It is actually quite small and most people are rather disappointed when they see it for the first time because they had imagined it would be much bigger. To the north of Piccadilly Circus is Soho, which has been the foreign quarter of London since the 17th century. Now it has restaurants offering food from a variety of different countries, especially Chinese and Italian ones. London is famous for its live theatres, and there are over 30 theatres within a square mile. If you want to know what is on in London, the best place to look is in a newspaper. Exercise 13. Trip to Belfast. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Belfast. Now I will give you some information about Belfast. Belfast is one of the youngest capital cities in the world, and it has grown incredibly fast. Today, the city has a population of 400,000, nearly a third of the entire population of Northern Ireland but in the 17th century it was only a village. Then, during the 19th century, the development of industries like linen, rope-making, engineering, tobacco, and the sea trade doubled the town's size every 10 years. The city is well known for shipbuilding. It was here that the Titanic was built and sent out on her fatal maiden voyage. Here is your brief tour around Belfast. This morning, you will visit an art gallery, Belfast Cathedral, and City Hall. This afternoon, you will visit the zoo, and this evening, you will go to a concert at Ulster Hall. Tomorrow morning, you will visit Ulster Museum and see 9,000 years of human history in Ireland and the gold treasure of the 16th century Spanish warship which was recovered off the coast of Antrim in 1968. In the afternoon, you will go to the Botanic Gardens and you will walk among rare plants. Some of the tropical plants are 100 years old. And then you will visit the Palm House. It was built in 1850. You will have a free evening, so you can go to some local pubs. It's possible for you to find a really friendly atmosphere and enjoy some Irish folk music there. Next morning, at 10, you will leave the hotel and fly back to London. I hope you will enjoy the two-day tour. Thanks. Exercise 14. 
TV and radio. Watching television is one of the great British pastimes. Broadcasting in the United Kingdom is controlled by the British Broadcasting Corporation, known as the BBC, and the Independent Broadcasting Authority, known as IBA. The BBC receives its income from the government. The IBA earns money from private companies advertising. National radio is controlled by the BBC, and listeners can choose between four stations. Radio One is a pop music station with news and magazine-style programs. Radio Two plays light music and reports on sport. Radio Three plays classical music, and Radio Four has news programs, drama. And general interest programs. There are many local stations, some private and some run by the BBC. Their programs consist mainly of music and local news. The BBC has two TV channels. BBC Two has more serious programs and news features. The IBA is responsible for looking after the regional independent TV companies. Who broadcast their own programs and those they have bought from other regions? There is a break in programs for advertisements about every 15 to 20 minutes. The most recent independent channel is Channel 4, and it has more specialized programs than the main channels. In general, people think the programs offered on British television are of a very high standard. Some people, however, are becoming worried about the amount of violence on TV and the effect this may have on young people. Exercise fifteen: Sports. Sports are very important in British life. It's possible to practice all kinds of sports in Britain. You can see water sports, sailing and rowing are practiced on the lakes, rivers, and coastlines. These kinds of sports are more popular in summer. Walking, rock climbing, and horse riding are all good ways to explore the landscape. Nearer your home, you will certainly find outdoor pitches for football, cricket, and other team games. Tennis. Is played on outdoor courts in the summer, while squash has become a popular game in recent years, as it can be played year-round on indoor courts. Most colleges and towns will also have indoor swimming pools, and some have ice skating rinks. Many colleges have their own extremely impressive sports facilities, and this is the best place to find what is available. For example, most universities have a day at the start of the year when all the clubs and societies advertise their activities, and you can go round and choose which you would like to join. The most popular outdoor spectator sports are football and horse racing. Most large towns have their own football team and ground, while race courses. Are found in the country and outside most major cities. All forms of motor racing are also popular. Sport plays such a large part in British life that many idioms in the English language have come from the world of sport. For example, "to play the game" means "to be fair," and "that's not cricket" means "that's not fair." The most popular sport in Britain as a whole is football. A lot of people support their local clubs at matches on Saturday afternoons, or watch the matches live on television.